We have day four of the One Rental at a Time boot camp, and I want to make sure I am ready to go. More on that in a minute. Folks, let's talk about the Phoenix housing market. Got some data from a great follow on Twitter. The, the real estate guy or real estate guy on Twitter gave me some great data. I'm going to share with you the data on Phoenix, but then the goal of this is to help you look at your market, your buy box, okay? Because again, we are going to see some very interesting headlines, but remember, your job is to find a great deal in your market and in your buy box. We'll talk about the week ahead from earnings and economic data, and yes, we'll even talk about deflation in China and what that might mean and what is actually causing it because I think it is important. So folks, let's talk about the Phoenix housing market. As you know, I personally do not invest there, but I do follow the market because there are just some locations that if you can find out what's going there, you can interpret what may happen across the country. And Phoenix, Scottsdale, that general area is certainly one of them. So again, this is not my data. This is a shout out to real estate guy on X or on Twitter. He posted first yesterday, inventory in Phoenix is up 2,000 units or properties in 60 days. Now, you don't have scale, so I'll give it to you. It's roughly from 9,000 to 11,000 active listings. Now, that is a significant move. Because you have to remember, when you look at seasonality, usually heading into the winter, it doesn't jump that much. And I would argue in many cases, it goes the other direction as people wait to sell in the spring. But let's talk about this because when I saw that, I'm like, oh, interesting. But I bet you there's a subtle and important tweak that everybody is gonna miss. So. I sent him a tweet back and you could go on my Twitter or my X feed and see all of this in real time. So I'm not making it up. I respond back with, Hey, do you know what percent of those 2000 is above and below the median? Why is that important? Well, if you've been following this channel, you know that I believe the luxury market is in trouble, AKA above the median you know that below the median is still on fire, bidding wars, no inventory. So again, in my Twitter feed, which you can go back and find, I proposed that I suspected 65% or greater was above the median. Again, he has this great data. He came back within, I don't know, 10 or 15, maybe 20 minutes and said it's actually 69.5%. So between you and I, let's round that to 70%. 70% of the 2,000 new listings, AKA 100 in, or 1,400, are above the median, which means 600 are below the median. What does that mean? Well, I think it is a recipe for exactly what we've been talking about. One, inventory is going to go up. Active listings are going to go up. Why is that? Folks, who the heck wants to move up or buy a luxury home when rates are 8%? I mean, really, it's, it's crazy. Nobody wants to do that. So we are going to see inventory like Phoenix go up. But what about price? Everybody is focused on price. Folks, we are going to see existing home sales next week hit a new low, in my opinion. We're going to break below 4 million. You're focused on the wrong area. Housing is something called inelastic. Housing is not a meme stock. Shoot, housing is not a regular stock. It is something that people will, it will take time for anything to ripple through. So the other thing that is very interesting, and I replied back, I believe I did, check me, go follow me on Twitter, one rental at a time. In this case, the one is the number, not the word. Uh, I believe I replied back with, guess what? Lower transactions, higher median price. Now, Michael, how could there be a higher median price? Folks, median is middle. 
If 70% of the new listings are above the median, 30% are below, what do you think happens? The price gets pulled higher, even with lower transactions. This is a perfect example of what I think is coming. Transactions are going down, existing home sales are going down to 3.75 to 3.8 million. Uh, Redfin CEO Glenn something is just wrong. We are going lower on transactions. Unfortunately, price, the median home price, is going to be pulled higher because of interest rate lock-in, no inventory, it's just, it's just where we are. And there are things that may build behind the scenes that changes that story, but as we sit here in October, it is go it's gonna be the story the rest of the year. It just is. Inventory will rise, luxury home or above the median will go up faster, nobody's buying that stuff, days on market will expand. Days on market is your key. Days on market is your key. All right, folks, I have a treat for you. I have a treat for you, but I also have an ask or you won't get the treat. So if you don't know already, Jason Pritchard, the number one investor in Central California, has agreed to talk to my boot camp today at 8 a.m. or in about 25 minutes. We are going to talk about working with your spouse or your significant other. We're going to talk about raising private money. We're gonna talk about marketing off market and we're gonna talk about when to scale up or scale down your business. This is gonna be done for my bootcamp students, about 42 or 43 folks, but I have a treat for you. I have a third channel called Best of ORAT, O-R-A-A-T. It only has 100 subscribers. It gets one video a day, yes, on this channel, I know, six videos a day is a lot, but I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun. So I created the Daily Financial News channel, which will get this video later today, and the best of ORAT to only have one new video. So it's easier to keep up with the best of the best. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna load that two hour day four boot camp on the channel called Best of ORAT. Please go subscribe now. Hit the notification bell now. I would expect, given it's a two hour file, it would probably be up by noon Pacific. It will not be there long. Why am I doing this? Well, I wanna monetize the channel. Let's be clear. I need 1,000 subscribers and I need 2,000, no, 4,000 watch, 4, watch hours, some, some big number. So I'm gonna load a video that's two hours long that you are going to want to see, enjoy. So, hope you enjoy that. Go subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. Uh, what else do we got? Let's talk about the week ahead. We always have the economic week ahead, but we also now are getting into earnings season. Let's do earnings first. Monday, Charles Schwab, plus First Bank. Here's, here's a uh, umbrella statement for the week. Watch regional banks. Watch regional banks. Um, regional banks, there's plenty of regional banks that report Wednesday. The list was too long, I just said plenty of regional banks. But they report all week, including on Monday with First Bank. Watch regional banks. Cash balances, loan value, reserve for bad debt. What's going on? The big banks are fine. We saw that last week. Citigroup, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. The big five, big six are fine. Um, but again, watch regionals. Regionals caused that uh, hiccup last, uh, last year. On Tuesday, we got Bank of America, United, Goldman Sachs, and Albertsons. I'll be looking at United and Albertsons. What's going on with food and what's going on with revenge travel. Wednesday, all you Tesla fans, you're going to get Tesla on Wednesday, Netflix, and again, plenty of regional banks. Uh, Thursday, you're going to get American Airlines and Blackstone, and then Friday, you'll get American Express. What about the economic data for the week? Well, not to be missed, on Monday, we get a manufacturing survey. Is it above or below 50? Are we contracting or are we growing? Tuesday. Tuesday's a big day. Let me think. I think Tuesday's probably the biggest day for economic data. Retail sales. What's going on with the consumer? What's going on with the consumer? Are they still strong? Are they still carrying the momentum forward? 
Home builder confidence, a lot of housing data this week. Home builder confidence, I don't know how it could be great. I'm hearing more and more builders pull back. Dude, there's this, people don't get this. Home builders. And that, we're not talking Polte and Lennar and Toll Brothers. We're talking that next tier down who can't get financing. Folks, we are going to be short. So many single family homes come March, April, and May because they're not building them now. It takes time. I am very nervous for the inventory of new homes should, should, if all that, interest rates come down next year. It, it could really be, it could really be a mess, frankly. On Wednesday, we will get housing starts. My guess is they pull back. Why would you start a house now at 8%? Thursday, 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 existing home sales. Glenn, the CEO of Redfin, says we're not going under 4 million. He is wrong, wrong, wrong. My guess is we get down to like 382, 383, 3.82, 3.83 million units, but we will find out Thursday morning. And then finally, Friday, uh, I just highlighted lots of Fed talk next week. The Fed, everybody on the Fed seems to be talking once, if not twice. Lots of headline, lots of market moving. What are we watching for? Is the Fed done? Is the Fed see cracks in the economy? Again, we have flipped from a 60% chance of one more hike this year to a 60% chance of no hike. I, as you know by now, believe we are done hiking, but we will find out. We will get a lot of Fed speak this week that will be important. Alrighty, folks, let's just close on China. China, if you don't know, uh, their economy is struggling. One, so one, three months ago, they had deflationary CPI, meaning negative. We're not talking inflation, disinflation. We're talking deflation, okay? Negative numbers. The following month, it was zero, or the following month, it was up 0.1. And then this month was zero. What is going on? Why is that a problem? Folks, the Chinese economy, really it's the Chinese consumer, right? The Chinese consumer, the Chinese economy kind of interconnected. The Chinese consumer has been crushed. They have lost faith in the housing market. The housing market in China has been the backbone, the backbone of retirement and pensions. They don't have 401ks. They don't have these things. They would buy a second home as a way to fund their retirement. That belief is now cracked, crushed. Guess what happened? Ask yourself, if your, for, if your 401k went down 50%, how would that feel? It would be horrible. It would, you'd be horrible, but what would you do? What would you do? There's this thing called the wealth effect. The wealth effect. When you feel wealthy, you spend more. Guess what the reverse of that is? when you don't feel as wealthy, or you have just taken a great loss, you conserve, conserve, conserve. That is what is happening in the Chinese economy at a huge and massive number. They're going to have to implement significant stimulus or belief or back up the real estate. They're gonna to have to do something gigantic because the consumer is scared, they're conservative, they're not spending. Domestic demand in China is down, down, down. Alrighty, folks, I hope you do that. I hope you go to Best of ORAT, O-R-A-A-T. I would subscribe and I would hit the notification bell. You are going to get day four of the boot camp later today. You're gonna to wanna to hear from Jason Pritchard, how he and his wife worked together when he burned the ships, when he quit his job, when he laddered up his credit cards, when he went all in. You're gonna to wanna to hear about raising millions of dollars in private capital. You're gonna to wanna to hear about marketing to off-market deals. And you're gonna talk about how to scale and when to back down. You don't wanna miss it. Jason is the man, he is the best of the best, and he's coming on for two hours. I look forward to the conversation. Guys, have an amazing day. Take care of yourself, like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget that Vegas event we still got some seats left. 199, February 17th and 18th, 11, 12, 13 millionaires, 250 plus guests. You're going to want to be there, concert, all that stuff.
Bye.